What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode with Franklin. If you haven't, please smash the like button, smash the subscribe button. So I want to talk about something very quickly. Africans, um, a lot of our folks have, uh, have adopted the, the idea of, um, you know, we flock out of the country and we can, the reasons are multifaceted, okay? Going to the West, trying to better your life and all that. I traveled when I was a lot younger, lived there about 20 plus years of my life understandably so okay and then i've also recently talked about the 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 new drive where people are selling their assets that's worth multi-millions and all that stuff but today this is a very different angle to this okay so i'm on ground here in nigeria and this is just an observation and so let's talk let's look inwardly okay people are running out because they're looking for daily bread and just before i carry on Running away from Africa is never going to be the remedy of Africa or, or the remedy for Africans in terms of the problems that we have in the continent as a group of people. It's never going to be. Running away from Africa is never going to. That's, a, that's just a fact, okay? It might give you personal remedies and stuff, but over time, if we are not careful, we will more than likely become tenants in the African continent. But here's the point. So when you look around here in Nigeria, for example, there is a common behavior, which is in most businesses, establishments, you go to hotels, restaurants, and grocery shopping, and most places, you find the depth of criminality. I'm going somewhere, you know, because I've always talked about the lack of togetherness, how we work amongst ourselves to destroy ourselves as black folks, okay? Now, there's a very common culture, and this is a very deeply rooted criminal culture. So what do I mean? So this is a hotel, for example, right? So say, for example, I've asked for a room service in terms of like food, I place an order for like a plate of jello fries with you know fried plantain and and beef and all that and they bring that to my room and then i want to pay with my 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 card and stuff you get this uh thing where they'll say to you the um the pos machine you know um is not working um uh you can't um and then they would say they'll give you a bank account now that's where the, you start to unpack the fraud they'll say oh you know you should do a bank transfer and then you realize that they'll give you an individual's bank account why do they do this it's a very very easy means to siphon the funds from the business owners this is a very deeply rooted culture it's not unique to the hotel in fact then you realize that you are dealing with a racket it's like a cabal in a lot of the establishments it's a cabal so when one person is trying to force you and they have these sort of dictatorial behavior you know they get rattled when you say so someone like me and my wife would insist on nope i'm not paying into personal account give me the business account because i'm pro us i'm pro black and the thought process that we carry is this is somebody's business this is somebody's hard work if some individual employee is asking me to um pay say 15,000 naira, 10,000 naira, 12,000 naira into their personal accounts. You know, they're basically siphoning funds from the owner or the owners of these establishments. And this is how they collapse, you know, businesses and stuff. Because since we got to this hotel, for example, since I got here, there's been several attempts by the un, some of the unscrupulous staffs, they were trying to be sleek, be smooth and try to force me to pay into. So, and I stood my ground, that's my nature. And I said, nope, I have a, you know, details of the hotel's business bank account. So I paid and then I'll send them the proof via WhatsApp. There's somebody at the reception downstairs who would confirm. The point I'm trying to make is this afternoon, we went into, uh, what do you call it? A grocery store just down the road but quite massive quite massive and 
on the third level in that store, they, they were going to pay for two bottles of wine and something else. And then they came up with, oh yeah, the POS is not working, which we knew was a lie. And then they provided us with an individual's account. I'm telling you, every um, facets of the industry that you go, hospitality, wherever you find yourself, this, and this is one of the common ways where they cripple and collapse businesses. The point I'm trying to bring out here, and a couple of points, okay? This is how they ruin businesses for a lot of um, business owners. You could be a diaspora and you could be a home-based person and stuff. And, but here's the thing. One, the culture of criminality amongst our people as Africans, they don't care. This is why I say to diasporans, it's not enough that you took out a loan in America, in the UK, in the US, mm -hmm. Oh, you want to come build a hotel or you want to come you want to go into farming you want to go into having a poultry this is why i keep saying if you're not going to be on ground at the forefront of those type of businesses right trust me the 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 there is depth and there is levels to this criminality there are places where they know that you're going to count your stock let's say you were selling bottles of water they know that you might have an account for okay i have a thousand bottles of water in the store you know have Okay, if, if there is a hundred bottles missing, that means you've sold a hundred. There are places where the connive, that's plus the security guards at the gate and stuff. So some of these stuffs even bring in their own stock. So they will set your stock aside. They might sell maybe 20 bottles from your stock and then they will tell you, oh, we've only sold, you know, 20 bottles of water, right? What they will do is they will bring in their own stock. There will be a common knowledge in the midst of these cabals, right? And they will sell keep selling maybe their own alcohol and stuff like that. So even if you take stock, if you were not there and you count your bottles of Hennessy or Jack Daniels or Coke or whatever, you, you, they'll be complete. But the thing is, the daily denial of sales and revenue, they, will, they can make millions, hundreds of thousands per day and they will share this whilst you, the ceremonial owner of the business, might actually be struggling to stay afloat. Some, in most cases, some business owners even have bank loans that they're servicing and stuff. And this is how they will run you to the ground and absolutely sabotage you. Now, like I say, I, myself, and you know, likewise, same mindset with my wife, we make this effort that when we get to places like this or restaurants, I ask for the business account. You should do the same because once you pay your money, you know that the money goes into the business account of the establishment. So more than likely, the business owners are going to see the money and then they can make their profits and, and handle their cash how they didn't fit. And it's everywhere. The point is, some diasporans, they, they try to talk and say, oh, they, they, they might say, the, the, the narrow-minded ones, oh, yeah, Franklin, this is why we try to leave that society. It's a lie. What I've realized, my conclusion is, it's the same Africans. We are the same. The only reason that you might not be able to do that, right? Because, you know, people get away with all sorts here because of a lack of accountability in Africa. Doesn't mean you cannot make headway in Africa. But the only reason why a lot of the same Nigerians are the ones traveling abroad. The only reason that people don't have, most of our people don't have the balls of steel to do the same in the UK, for example, is because you know there's an instant repercussion. There is more than likely you pick up a criminal record, you might get jailed. Right. So it doesn't mean that because the moment you travel and cross over, you become a diaspora and you have a label of innocence attached to your name. It's a lie. There are so many unscrupulous diasporans. I, I provide Ifa divination service on my on my channel here. I've had plenty. In fact, more than 10, if not 12 of diasporans over time that, that try to pay me with stolen PayPal accounts, stolen credit cards. A lady is talking to me, Chinyere, such and such, and then she's paying me with a man, a Yoruba man's PayPal account. And when I ask questions, they refuse to, to answer. I've had to refund payments and notify PayPal or block them. There are people that have tried to pay me with stolen, stolen bank accounts. And so the same diasporans, the same Nigerians. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you see, trooping abroad, it's not enough. In fact, there is no remedy involved. Let's, 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 let's be honest. So when we talk about governmental failings, this is my final point in Africa, the government has done X, Y, Z. That's a common knowledge. The reason I don't get involved, even some people have asked me to make content about, I don't have time for that. 
The reason I don't get involved in that, not because I want to turn blind eye, is when you look at the people you deal with on a daily basis, on the ground level, you and I that we see ourselves, people are totally evil. They are heartless, right? People are out to absolutely destroy you. If, if they see that you have this, they want to absolutely snatch this off you. They want to make sure that you don't even have money to replace this tomorrow morning and stuff like that. So it also proves a point, the lack of togetherness. So the question is, how do we build Africa? Because wait, the colonizer is not going to build Africa for you. I'm sure you know that already. They are there to excavate, to siphon, to steal, kill and destroy, to, to you know, for their own benefit. How do we make progress as a people? That's why you find tons and tons of immeasurable amounts of stories where, you know, you ask people to help you build homes, families. I've, I've helped people with all sorts of errand services here that people can't even count on families and stuff. Even friends let them down. It's a very, very deeply rooted culture. People will, will put their claws, their fangs into your business that you are hoping to build to become an empire, to make money from, to be able to feed your family, and they will drain your finance they will connive and, and basically for their own selfish gratification. How do we improve? We are the same set of people that travel abroad. The only difference is there is, a, there is a sense of fear because of the instant you know that there's a repercussion. Do you understand? You know that as soon as you steal 200 pounds from, from the till of the store and you are caught, in 321999, the police are going to come. And from there, they document you. You may end up in magistrates the next morning. You get locked up. And they know the consequences are severe. So that's why. Not because, oh, the moment you get to diaspora, you become a totally changed person. Change is subjective. Who you are, ethics, morals, they're subjective. I just thought, let me talk about this. I love Africa. I love us. Like my wife would say, I'm pro-us. But it's nice to have this conversation. There are tons and tons of wonderful businesses that we see, people making efforts, and it's the attitude. People will go to any extent. Let this be a lesson. This is not to dissuade you, right? Make sure that you protect your assets. Be prepared to go the extra mile, right? To protect your flow of cash and stuff because people are totally heartless. They don't care. Oh, they will connive the odd 5,000 there, 10,000 there, 100,000 there that we connive. Repeatedly, they've tried it. I'm currently in Lagos. If you go to Ibadan, if you go to all, all the parts of the country, the very common culture, you see somebody working at the bar, right? Maybe they're selling drinks, alcohol in the hotel, and then they'll tell you the, the POS is dysfunctional, and then they'll tell you, oh, yeah, yeah, put in my personal account, uh, Shagun Adishina. Uh, UBA Bank or or GT Bank or Frost Bank, and then you say, um, nope, these restaurants should have their own business account. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 it's, it's not available. Ah, uh, no, no, because why? That money goes in. You've paid them. You've pretty much dashed them that lump sum of money. I've heard stories of somebody working as a cleaner in a hotel, and they were building two bungalows simultaneously. I heard stories of somebody who built a four flat, who built duplexes off the back of the owner of the business. So what do you think? Let's keep the conversation going. We are our own problems, and I believe we are also our own solution. Not the colonizer, not relocation, not the West. We are the answer to our own problems. Thank you for watching, and I hope to catch you in the very next one. Don't forget to smash the like button. On a final note, if you are interested in Ifa divination, uh, uh, basically looking into any parts of your life, any questions you, you want to ask Ifa and stuff, you can bang me an email, foodchannel1960 at gmail.com. Of course, a JA, predestination checks, relationship compatibility checks. You want to, you've just started to 2023. You want to look into the roadmap. What has the universe got in stock for you? Let me know. Bang me an email. Follow me on Instagram at Franklin, as it's spelled on my channel. And I look forward to um, take your emails or answer your questions. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.